I purchased the DJI Osmo Action 4 on release date and I've been testing it since the beginning of August. We've talked about D-Log, stability, my favorite mounts, but today we are gonna accumulate all of that into a one month review. So let's just dive into it and I think we're gonna start by talking about, about the quality of this camera. And one thing I can say is it looks absolutely beautiful. All the action cameras do nowadays. But the DJI specifically is awesome for me because I can control everything that I need to. I can turn down the sharpness and the D noise, which I have both at negative two, not positive, but negative two. And I also have auto exposure on right now in 4K24. So as you can see, I walk from the sun to the shadow and everything is going to expose properly. It has D-Log, which we will talk about in just a little bit. But right now, I just want you to get a sense of what this footage looks like right out of camera. It is in 4K24, regular rock steady, and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm just look at like the sun out off in the distance. Oh, my backyard looks beautiful. I'm hoping I can capture all that. Hmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy sunlight. With that being said, we're gonna go inside and talk about some clips and things that I have filmed throughout the past month. We're also gonna talk about some new things that I have found out and discovered over the past few days. I wanted to give a disclaimer and say that this is my one month consumer review based on my use with the DJI Osmo Action 4. I'm not gonna go as in depth as other YouTubers or tech reviewers, but I'm gonna talk about the things that matter the most to me in my experience over the last month using this camera. Let's dive in. One thing that's extremely important to me is durability. I have butterfingers, but this camera has held up so far over the last month. I've dropped it three times on the gravel. The second time I dropped it, dropped it while I was running. It hit my foot and I kicked it another five or six feet. And this camera doesn't have any dents or dings and touch screens are fine. I haven't even had to replace the outer lens cover yet, but I have some extras if I need it. And I even have the uh, DJI like, uh, like insurance plan. So if I, completely damaged the camera, I can at least replace it for the next two years. Now with that being said, the durability has held up. Um, it is an action camera, so it's meant to get down in the nitty gritty, but if you do drop this camera on gravel or somewhere where there's small rocks that may contain metal or like iron, they can get trapped in the actual like magnetic mount and it can be kind of a pain to clip it together. So just make sure that you keep something with you just in case you drop the camera where you can clean out those magnetic mounts. Other than that, the durability on this camera is fantastic, and I would definitely recommend using the uh, the switch case on it, because it does a good job protecting it and allowing you to switch from horizontal to vertical. Another thing I love about this camera was the easy use. When it came to setup, I did have to connect it through the DJI app, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. It gives you five times of being able to use it before you have to officially connect it and register it with the DJI app. But I was able to go through the menus, set up everything, even the custom settings, every way I wanted to without having to read the manual. I know that's nothing new or super impressive in 2023, but it was just refreshing to go through a menu setting and not have to like wonder where anything was at. I could just go through and find everything. And this is my first DJI camera. I don't own any drones. I do own the RS3 Mini, but the menu system is a little different on that being a gimbal. The touch screens on this are fantastic, and the fact that you have a front touch screen where you can actually change the settings if you swipe up on it, I believe, yeah. So you can actually go through and you can start swiping through the settings. Like, what? That's so cool. Like, that in itself is game changing because if you have this mounted on something like your dash, you can go through and just sit there and change the settings instead of having to actually take the camera off of the mount and go turn everything around, get everything set up, and get everything mounted back correctly. Now you can just do it right from the touch screen. I'm all about ease of use, and the DJI Osmo Action 4 is an extremely easy to use action camera. Is it even an action camera in 2023 if it doesn't have 120 FPS? Well, the DJI Osmo Action 4 does 4K and 120 FPS, which you're looking at right now. I think it looks fantastic. It's not over sharpened and it processes it pretty well. But if you go down to 1080p, you can access 240 frames per second, which in my opinion looks a little mushy. Um, it's there if you need it. 
It's not something I'm gonna be using that often, but it's great for social media if you wanna get that extreme slow motion. So it is there, just be mindful, it's a little bit mushier than the 4K 120, which I think looks exceptional. There are two levels of stability offered in the Osmo Action 4, Rock Steady, which you're currently looking at right now, and Rock Steady Plus, which crops in a little bit more. It also has horizon balancing, which in 4K allows you to go up to 45 degrees with keeping the horizon level. Or if you go down to 2.7K, horizon steady, which allows you to do 360 degrees, keeping the horizon 100% level. There really isn't any quirks with the stability on this camera. I have run into some ghosting in extreme low light conditions with jerky movements, but that hasn't been a major issue for me. One thing I will mention is there's no internal GPS data. So if you're trying to do something like real steady or put this on an FPV drone, um, you need the GPS watch, which is an external accessory to actually gather that GPS data. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna purchase the DJI Osmo Action 4. I'm actually waiting for that to come back in stock because it keeps disappearing like that. Every time they send that email out, it's gone in like 10 minutes. Speaking of accessories, another thing I needed to talk about, which this part's gonna be quick, is the magnetic mounting system with the Osmo Action 4. This has been around since the Osmo Action 2, but it's so innovative that I even saw GoPro feet the other day that you could swap out that work with the magnetic mounting system. You can take it off of one mount and just kinda magnetically click it right onto the other, and once I hear that click, I know it's in place and I trust it on whichever mount I'm using. So as long as a swap, and I hear that click, I know that that camera is secure and it's not going anywhere. Now, it does have its quirks as I mentioned earlier in the video, but I love this magnetic mounting system and I will never go back to anything different. It even kind of guides you in place because it's magnetic and make sure you know where it's at and once you clamp it, it is good to go. So I've actually had trouble killing the battery on this camera. I normally film in 4K24 and my clips aren't too long, so I can get through a few days on one battery with a big enough SD card. Now, it does come with three batteries, which you can quick charge to 80% in 18 minutes, which is fantastic. You can't quick charge the GoPro batteries. That, I know, is a fact, um, unless they change that with the Hero 12 coming out. But that right there, that to me is like a seller and a half. Uh, these action batteries work well. I was testing this in the heat and in 4K24, I got the battery to last for 97 minutes. Now I also did the same thing in 4K 120 and I got the camera to last for 72 minutes. So that is an extremely long runtime for one continuous clip from one single battery on the action cam. Now for me, I'm sticking to my 4K 24 with my shorter clips, but if I ever need to stick it up for behind the scenes, I know that it will last in a long, hot environment. I also forgot to mention the temperature this week ranged anywhere from 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or ranging around like 37 and a half or like 38 degrees Celsius, which is like wild. So I also did not notice any slowdown. It didn't overheat, freeze or glitch. So that's another benefit of the Action 4. Now for some fun stuff. Let's talk about D-Log. The clips I'm pulling up right now are part of a sequence that I put together earlier this month where I filmed in D-Log. I brought everything back to Rec. 709 and then added a slight color grade. This is something I'm still learning, but I did want to touch on with it being a prominent feature in this camera. For those of you that don't know, D-Log is a flat picture profile that allows you to pull back more data from your highlights and your shadows when used and exposed properly. When not used properly, you can actually ruin your footage and make it completely unusable. That's where I'm at, still learning how to use D-Log, so join me for my journey. Make sure you subscribe and we will stay tuned to see how the D-Log can look out of this camera when used properly. So cars are pretty insulated, so they're actually great for voiceovers if you didn't know, if you don't have your own like setup at home. But the audio on these cameras does pretty good pickup in the wind, and no better place to try that than a car with the windows down. So that's why I switched into the ultra wide field of view. You can watch me roll down all the windows in the car, turn on the AC full blast, and let's see how I sound in an extremely windy environment. The speed limit is 55 where we're at, so we're gonna be going about 60 miles an hour. Last 
here while I was in Iceland, my Insta360 Go 2 did a fantastic job. We were on the side of a volcano, it was extremely windy, and it picked up my voice just fine, even with the hail passing by. My Canon M50 with my shotgun microphone, calibrated to the best I could, clipped the whole entire day, and that Insta360 Go 2 saved my butt while we were at the volcano. Stay tuned for that footage. I would say that sounds pretty good, especially for an action camera with all the windows down and the AC blasting. If you want to see this full segment in my in-depth video on whether you can vlog with the action for, I'll link that up here or down below in the description. Now that we've made it this far, let's talk about the good and the bad of the Osmo Action 4. Let's start with the pros. The reliability on this camera is fantastic. It has not overheated, even though I've tried to make it overheat, it has not froze even though I've tried to make it freeze. The touch screens work in the water, and the fact that it has two touch screens that work amazingly in itself is its own pro. So the reliability on this camera, I know once I turn it on and start filming, it's just gonna work, it's not gonna freeze, and the touch screens are gonna work when I need them to. It has all the frame rates and all the functionality I need, but that kind of wraps up the pros. So if we go into the cons, one thing I could definitely say is it just works. That's also a con because there hasn't been any innovation really in this camera. Now, I mentioned that the magnetic mount has been around since the Osmo Action 2, which that's cool, but it's the only real innovation that this camera's had because the last two were kind of flops. The last one had a focusing problem, which they fixed after a few months, but it took a while. And then the Osmo Action 2, that had a bunch of overheating issues. So we're finally at a place where the camera works, which is fantastic. But the GoPro Hero 12 is coming out and they're kind of having the same comments if you go through the videos. People are like, hey, hopefully this camera works, but it just looks like a firmware upgrade. So the reliability of this camera is fantastic. GoPro looks like they're working on reliability. But if they got this camera right last year, they could have been working on innovation this year. So I wanted to give my final thoughts on the DJI Osmo Action 4. Would I purchase this action camera in 2023? Well, I spent $700 of my own money on it, so that answer is yes. But should you purchase this action camera? If you own the Osmo Action 3, I wouldn't suggest upgrading because they've upgraded that camera enough to where this is kind of like a software upgrade. But if you're looking for a standalone action camera and you don't own one yet, sure. If you have a GoPro Hero 11, I wouldn't suggest switching over. If you're trying to see if you should purchase the Hero 12 or the Action 4, that's gonna be something we're gonna to have to wait to see. But I would say if you're looking at purchasing or have other cameras in the DJI ecosystem, maybe go with the Action 4. That's why I purchased it. I plan on buying a DJI drone soon. I have one of their gimbals and the intuitive menu systems just kind of are cohesive and create an ecosystem that's easy to use for me. With that being said, are you gonna purchase the DJI Osmo Action 4?